All right, what is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Jason Wojo here. Just wanted to give you guys a quick video uh, for my agency owners out there who have been asking, commenting in the comment section, what are the biggest struggles to hitting 50K per month in your agency? Now, where we're at, you know, we're doing over half a mil a month. So it's exciting for me to give you this kind of like, you know, introspective into how we run things and how I was as a solopreneur and how I can relate to you right now. Because to be honest, hitting 50K a month is not that hard if you can lose a couple of, you know, control mechanisms and also having a little bit of systems. You don't need a crazy amount. You're not gonna have this massive team, but there's departments you have to cover and there are expenditures you have to be ready for. So. First things first, the biggest struggle, number one, is leads, okay? So I'm not telling you that she only be running ads, but you should have some type of ecosystem to bring people into. So either you're doing cold email or you're doing cold outreach or you're running ads or you're posting content just like I do, right? What does that ecosystem look like and how are you welcoming new leads to come in? Like, why should people trust you to join your ecosystem? And that's what makes a huge difference. So like, you know, you could do this through paid traffic, you could do this through organic, okay? You know, also email, so cold email. Where are the most important parts you'd really hit so that you have a good consistent flow of leads? So that's, that's number one. And now don't go out there when you're running ads, don't run free lead magnets, don't run all this free crap that people push, right? There's only really two ways that I would really stem getting leads from is low ticket or just straight book call funnel. So I'm just gonna put BCF but it's just a book call funnel. So like people see your offer, maybe you just work with, you know, coaches, consultants, and info products, maybe you just work with local business, or maybe you work with e -com, right? Whatever that niche might be. Is it low ticket or is it a book call funnel? Those are the only two that I actually believe in because low ticket means you're self-liquidating, means you get money day one. Book call funnels are gonna allow you to get a streamlined of book calls so you get rid of the closed people, and that's more high ticket, okay? Now you can lead people from low ticket to high ticket, later on down the sales journey, but it's gonna be more beneficial for you at first to prove what that high ticket offer is gonna look like and then stem a low ticket offer to tease or plea people with. Okay, so that's the first thing that I say. Okay, and then number two is offers. Maybe you just only run ads and you have to realize that the less hands that you have in someone's business, the less you're gonna keep them around, okay? So having a good understanding of offers, always having new products to push. When you start scaling and you're trying to get to 50K a month, you can't only run ads. You need to have either good copy skills, being able to build offers, you know, being able to branch off into webinar funnels, low ticket offers, info products, right? Really have a vast knowledge of what different offers are gonna look like that you can not just create for yourself, but for your clients as well. If you don't know how to create good offers, your clients are gonna leave because they're not gonna be able to close a lot of people and also, it's just gonna be more of a struggle for you to get them results with your ads because their offer sucks. So if you don't have a good offer, you're never gonna be able to sell anything at scale unless the person has like millions of followers, they're like Tony Robbins, Gary Vee, right? You don't need a really sexy offer because the social group sells for itself. So that's the second struggle that I see with agency owners that are not being able to break past 50K a month. Three is gonna be control. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well. When you're a solopreneur and maybe you don't have a team right now and you're looking to hire out, you intrinsically think or are motivated by the fact that everybody that you hire needs to be as good as you. And, and that's a problem, right? They need to be at least 80% as good as you. And that control mechanism on giving up projects and be like, hey, like I trust you to do this or I trust you to do that. The biggest mistake people are gonna make is when they start scaling is they just hand off something to somebody. They're like, yeah, like fucking figure it out, right? And it's like, that's just not the way the world works. So there's gotta be systems, you know, SOPs, there's processes involved and actually handing that thing off. I um, mean, also having a project manager is probably the most important position that you're gonna need to hire before you even hit 50K a month. Because maybe, you know, free to hit 50K a month, you're either gonna be charging, I take it 5K a month, you're gonna have 10 really big clients, or you're gonna be charging 2,500 a month and you're gonna have 25 clients, you know, 20 to 25 clients. That's gonna require you to have a project manager or an account manager onboarding clients and keeping track of, you know, what's going on with each account, status, hopping on calls, getting feedback, you know, implementation, right? And that brings me to number four. Number four is departments. Okay, so what departments you're gonna be hiring for? First one is gonna be an AM or an account manager. Okay, someone who, like I said, can do onboarding, someone who can manage your chats, someone who can talk to clients with any feedback or any concerns or edits or revisions to the projects that you're doing to them. Two, is what we call a CSM or a customer success manager. So I'm gonna make sure that like they're actually successful with your services. That could be a hybrid between AM and CSM. I've seen that done before. I mean, we have that. So it makes the most sense, right? Third, 
sales. You need to get off the phones because if your client's going to get enough results to stay, you got to get off the phones. Like, yeah, selling's fun and collecting, you know, credit cards are fun, but when you can't keep the client, it's kind of just like a waste of time. So having someone come in there to do sales for you and replicate what you've done on the phones, at least half as well, because your conversion rates will drop on the phone when you're not on the phone. I get that. But that's part of trading. That's part of having the right systems to be able to debby off to them. Okay. Next one is going to be like tech. So that's going to be like copy, you know, developers funnel builders, et cetera, okay? Copywriters are gonna help with your ad copy. Developers are gonna help with landing pages, Shopify stores, all of the nooks and crannies and things that you wanna edit that you can't do in your own. And then that brings me to the last part, which is MBs, which are media buyers. People who can run the ads for you based on the strategy that you provided. Because when you're trying to hit 50K a month, you can do all the strategy. Like you're the visionary, you're, you're this, you know, you're becoming a bigger entrepreneur now. You know, you're making 600 grand a year, you know, Give or take, that could be a lot to some people, but you need to understand that you're the one who's the strategy behind how your clients succeed, what kind of funnels you're running, what kind of traffic sources you're running, what the video scripts are going to look like, what the ad copy is going to look like. All those things are very, you know, relatable to the entire ecosystem of the actual campaign. So you have to have your AM and CSM on board with the strategy. Your media buyer is going to know your strategy, and it's up to your AM and CSM to make sure that that whole strategy is successful and that media buyers implemented things correctly. Sales is still closing deals. And your copy developers and and you know etc and maybe VAs are all on the same page with the entire project. So that's why you become the visionary. And that brings me to number five, which is systems. No, I'm not talking about just softwares. I'm talking about in general how people are onboarded, how are they ascended, and how they are sold, and expectations. I know for some of you who are watching this, expectations are hard in the agency niche because people always set their own. You could tell somebody that it takes them 14 days to get a campaign up. They think it should be three minutes. Sometimes people just do not listen, and that's part of human nature. Soul is telling people what's actually going to happen. Don't just tell them stuff to sell. If that breaks, then you're going to have buyer's remorse and more refunds. And then you have ascension, which is like, all right, cool, client stays on. They're getting results. Can we upsell them email? Can we upsell them SMS? Can we upsell them a setter, closer, a new funnel? low ticket, like what else can we do to provide them value? And that onboarded means, hey, like the way the client's onboarded and how fast it is and how little work they have to do dictates the success of that. So like for onboarding, we use Leadsy. If you don't know what Leadsy is, um, it's a really cool software. It's like a one-click onboarding software. So they click a link and it just links up all their ad accounts to your stuff without you having to hop on a Zoom call for it. For Ascension, we do a 45-day feedback call. This is to get feedback on services because at this point they're activated. And this call is normally booked on your onboarding. So they book the onboarding call, they hop on. You get them to book that 45-day feedback call right on that call too so you know they're going to show up. The way that they're sold, this is just training in general. So like scripts, etc. And then for expectations, that could be an onboarding video. That could be on the onboarding call. Just having clear expectations of what holdups could be because like sometimes business owners want to blame the agency on why things aren't working out well but it might just be the client's fault too many revisions their communication is lacking and overall they just have a really crappy business where their offer is just like really crappy so those could be holdups with expectations so with that being said those are the biggest five struggles that i see with sma owners who are struggling to hit 50k uh, so you can plug those holes now and that will honestly let you break past 100k if you're able to cement those things that i just went over so if you're new to the channel like, comment, subscribe. If you are also interested in seeing me in person and you want to get more, you know, personal insight, I do run events for free. It might be in a city near you. We are in Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville, Atlanta, New York, Dallas, Austin, and we might be in a city near you. So check out the description. You'll be able to see the links for that and I will see you in tomorrow's video.